block, various grades of sandpaper, um, got wood stripper, which obviously I'm going to be using with gloves. Um, the reason why I'm using wood stripper is because there are quite heavy dents which I can't get the varnish off through sanding so got to use the wood stripper to take the varnish off so you've got gloves wood stripper and then when it's all stripped obviously you're going to be using the uh, trusty iron paint stripper says to apply one coat and then wait an hour and apply another coat I like to apply it liberally just to ensure that it's less likely to dry out while it's having an effect. An hour's passed and it's time to apply the second coat. Make sure obviously to get into anywhere you might have missed on the first pass. I like to achieve a nice solid depth of strippers. I don't really want to repeat this process. Here you can see me agitating the surface with a nylon brush and as you can see it's starting to change colour which means it's working. I didn't make a video of the next part but I used the same nylon brush with warm soapy water in my bathtub just to remove the stripper and the varnish residue. I then left the stock to soak in fresh warm water for a couple of hours just to make sure it's thoroughly drenched ready for steaming. Using a disposable iron and cloth I then proceeded to work my way over all of the dents that hadn't come out from soaking it. Some of the dents came out perfectly but others are simply too damaged so just be realistic with this portion of the restoration. Check by touch as you go along to see whether the dents have been removed. It does come down to how long you want to spend doing each segment. Steaming the stock alone took a good, a good sort of hour or two. I left the stock to dry naturally for a couple of days before I started the sanding process. Using 400 grit sandpaper, I sanded the entire stock inside and out. 400 grit is coarse enough to work, but not too coarse to leave scratches in the wood that you'll see later on. This also leaves a very smooth finish. Don't apply too much pressure when you're sanding, as you need to allow the dust to sort of fall away. If you do apply too much pressure, you'll actually find that it sticks to the paper and in extreme cases ends up just polishing the surface of the wood. With this rifle being 50 years old, the checkering had worn out significantly. And here you can see a bit of a before and after of what I, what I managed to achieve. I did search for checkering tools online, but I wasn't actually able to find any. Instead, I just used a fine bladed screwdriver and a lot of patience and I just worked my way over all of the checkering, restoring it to its original texture. Some areas either weren't completed in the first place or had completely worn out over time. Just be patient while you're doing this because it's actually quite easy to, to damage the stock.
clean the entire rifle with white spirit to remove any oils left by handling the stock and also to clean any of the dust away after sanding. Just make sure it's completely dry before staining as obviously this is a thinner and it will thin whatever you're using to stain it. part we've all been waiting for applying the stain. I like to use tongue oil as it's water, acid and alcohol proof. It's actually used for sort of chopping boards and kitchen work surfaces. It also strengthens the wood and it can be periodically retreated quite easily. I did experiment with a hidden part of the stock first which I was quite happy with. The colour is pretty much what you see straight away and it will dry with a matte finish which I much prefer to satin and gloss. As you can see here, I'm just using a nice soft paintbrush to get into all the intricate little parts inside. And then for the main body of the stock, I'm just using some kitchen towel just to, just to wipe it over. Once you've applied a coat, it then says, leave it for four hours for it to soak in obviously wiping any excess off after about half an hour and then you can reapply. So I went through this process about four times and the finish didn't really change much from probably the, the second coat but, but I was very happy with it. Just take your time and make sure you get into everywhere.